So uh, I am Chase Livingston. I'm a happiness engineer at uh, Automatic. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Jetpack, which is one of the plugins that we at Automatic build. Um, if you guys notice, we have a booth or a table um, outside. So if you have any questions after this, I'm going to take a few questions at the end. But um, feel free to stop by later today. There's going to be at least you know two of us at the booth today. So uh, we're happy to talk to you about Jetpack and uh, even help you get it set up on your site if you want um, later on today. Um, but let's jump in and, and we'll talk about uh, what Jetpack can do for you. Um, so our mission, if you choose to accept it, um, we have quite a few features in Jetpack. So it has uh, about 35-ish different modules that uh, you can use to do all kinds of different things for your site. Um, so you know you can see a lot of them listed there: contact forms, widget visibility, um, even some uh, Photon is a really nice image caching uh, module that we're going to talk about. Um, so just lots of different things that you can do um, to to help you, as I mentioned, supercharge your site. Um, so, as I mentioned, we can customize your site, you can uh, write great content, grow and engage your audience, uh, we even have some security features uh, as well as performance. Um, and so we're going to kind of use uh, those bullets there as some, uh, some large topic areas to go into. So the first one we're going to talk about is, is customizing your site and the, the different modules, um, or a few different modules we have that can help you do that. Um, so custom CSS, we have a mobile theme, contact form, sidebar widgets, and uh, some neat widget visibility features as well. So the first uh, kind of module I want to talk about is custom CSS. Uh, and it's a really neat way if you have just some simple color changes, layout changes, that kind of thing that you need to make to your site. You can, uh, without, if you don't need to make a child theme, which can be a little complicated if you're uh, not familiar with that, uh, custom CSS is basically just an easy way to add some, uh, some simple color changes or um, really anything you need to do uh, into, your, into your site. Um, and it's just under the appearance menu on your WordPress site. So appearance, edit CSS, uh, and you can basically, you know, if you find a uh, different color you want to use from your theme developer or something like that, you can just copy and paste that right in. Um, and, and click save, and uh, the, the change will be applied. And so some nice features of it, um, the changes are saved in a database, as it mentions there, as a custom post type. So if you mess up and want to revert, you can always go back to a previous revision um, and, and you know, go back to the changes that you did like if you accidentally did something you didn't like or if you uh, pasted in the wrong thing, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, it supports, if you're you know, really into developer stuff, it supports SAS and LESS preprocessors, which are basically uh, really powerful ways to write CSS. Uh, and so it's pretty cool that it supports that um, if, you're, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, and if you're running uh, you know, multiple sites, rather than making a bunch of different child themes for all your sites to, to hold your CSS changes, you can just use this. Um, and it's loaded in uh, as the, the last style sheet in line. Yes, sir? Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. So CSS itself, uh, it's called that stands for cascading style sheets, and it's basically the the code that is used to style the way your website looks. So the theme uh, has different. I'm sure you've heard of PHP files as well in your theme. Those are used for like actually inserting the content and making the. Uh, the, inserting the things that make the site look the way it looked, but then CSS actually uh, takes those and adds different colors, lays them out on the page wherever they should go. Um, you know, any visual uh, like niceties or anything like that are probably going to be written in CSS. Um, so CSS is kind of like a language? Yeah, it is, exactly. Yep. So if we go back, uh, I don't know if you can see too well on that slide, but basically, yeah, so you can target different elements on the page. Um, and then in brackets, you can see that um, those different elements have maybe colors applied, they have textiles applied, all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, it's essentially a, a simple, it's called a markup language, so it's not really a, a programming language, but you just use it to mark up the page uh, as to how you want it to look. Um, and so having that built into Jetpack is really simple if you just have you know, a few changes, if you want to change the color of your title or something like that, uh, super easy way um, to do that without you know, having to get into the craziness of like actually making a child theme or trying to edit the theme you already have. Um, yeah, a little bit. So HTML and CSS kind of go hand in hand. HTML and PHP do the uh, actual you know, insertion of the content onto the page and then CSS makes it look nice, essentially. Um, so another, 
Another feature to customize is uh, the contact form on your site. Um, so if you have, some people may be familiar with um, Gravity Forms or Ninja Forms or another Forms plugin like that, and those are all, um, I really like those. Those are all great plugins for um, doing some uh, really powerful things with Forms. Um, you can have you know, different uh, things depending on what users choose. But if you just need a simple contact form that if a user fills it out, it emails you, uh, a copy of what they fill out and then you can get back to them. The, the built-in Jetpack contact form is really, really easy. So it shows up as a button right above your post or page editor. You can add a contact form there. You can customize the fields it has. So if you don't need you know, their phone number or whatever, you can remove that or change it to their website address or whatever information you need to get from whoever is contacting you, you can, you can do that. Uh, and they're also emailed and saved locally on your site. So you'll see, once you enable it, you'll see a new feedback tab in your dashboard over on the left-hand side. And so if for some reason uh, your, the email gets caught as spam or something like that, you can always still get those submissions in that feedback tab on your dashboard uh, separate from the emails you get. And if you have uh, a Kismet installed, which most of, most of you probably do to help filter uh, comment spam and other spam on your site, any contact form submissions are also filtered through that, so uh, it tries to you know, catch you know, a spammer or a bot or something like that that's filling out your contact form. Um, so hopefully you won't see those. Uh, it's usually pretty good about that. Um, so that's just another you know, nice little feature. Doesn't have spam, yes sir? No, it doesn't have CAPTCHA because the Kismet's usually uh, pretty good about filtering out any spam that you get. So no, there's not a um, not a CAPTCHA. I haven't had any issues. I have a you know I've had a contact form, Jetpack contact form up on my site for years now, and have never gotten any spam. So um, uh, usually it's not something to worry about. So we'll move on. Um, sidebar widgets and widget visibility is another neat uh, feature we have. So the there are obviously some default widgets that are included in WordPress, and Jetpack can add a few more such as maybe displaying your Gravatar profile picture if you'd like, um, displaying some image galleries in your sidebar, um, Facebook like boxes, Twitter boxes, uh, all that kind of good stuff. And then widget visibility is a really powerful feature uh, some folks may not be aware of, but you can basically control where the widgets appear. So if you want them to appear you know, in your sidebar on your home page, but not on any other pages, you can use the, uh, the logic and widget visibility to tell them to do that. Or if you have a widget that you only want to appear on uh, you know, one single page of your site in the sidebar uh, on the top, but not on your home page or anywhere else, you can use that as well. Um, so I would recommend playing around with that if you have some customization you want to make to your widgets and that kind of thing. Um, it will really helps out um, in, in customizing your site and, and giving it some variety uh, when users click around on different pages. Uh, it doesn't always look the same. Um, and you can have you know, different things in your sidebar and your various widget areas, uh, however you would like. So next we've got uh, the kind of next big bucket I want to talk about is, is just writing great content. So Jetpack has a lot of features that can help you with that. Um, some are, are more helpful than others, so we'll kind of we'll breeze through these, and uh, hopefully some of them will be interesting to you. Uh, so the first one, post by email, is a uh, really handy, just a simple little feature if you're you know out of pocket or you're um, just you know have your maybe you have your your smartphone or something like that, and, and don't have the time to like load up the WordPress app and make a post. Um, if you have post by email set up, you can basically just go into your email client of choice and and create a new email to the. Uh, the secret email address that uh, post by email creates for you and uh, create a new post on your blog, you know, essentially from anywhere, anywhere you have access to be able to create a new email. Um, and so it, uh, you basically the, the subject of the email becomes the title of the post when you send that email and then the body of the email is the body of the post on your site when it gets published. Um, you can, uh, any short codes that you have on your site, if you have those to insert, you know, custom things, those will be evaluated when you post it. Um, and you know it's just super easy to uh, to fire off an email. A lot of people are uh, really used to doing that already. So if uh, that you know posting from mobile is something that you're not doing now, but you you might be interested in doing, um, that's a great way. You can attach pictures if you want to you know attach a picture to your post. That'll get inserted. Um, so just a super easy way if you're already you know sending an email from your smartphone. Uh, maybe try posting a picture from your smartphone or something like that to your blog if that's something you're interested in. Uh, and post by email enables you to do that really easily. Um, so the next thing, uh, Markdown, I don't know if any of you, get, if you guys are familiar with, with Markdown, but it's basically a, uh, a shorthand for writing like HTML markup. Um, so you can use uh, some 
different ways. So instead of like wrapping uh, text in HTML tags, um, you can use just some simple like pound symbols um, and, and asterisks and things like that to denote like italics and headings and, and that kind of thing. Uh, and so Jetpack includes a, a Markdown formatter basically. So when you if you do write in Markdown, um, you can paste that markdown right into your post editor and then the, the Jetpack markdown module will, will parse that and actually output uh, the, the post the way it's supposed to look in, in markdown. Um, I write a lot in markdown. It, it makes it easier to format the posts exactly the way you want them, insert links where you want them and that kind of thing. Uh, especially if you're writing not directly in the WordPress post editor, but maybe if you don't have internet access, you're just writing in a text document on your computer or something like that. Uh, it's super easy to, to get the post to look the way you want it without having to spend a lot of time. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Markdown number one, I would recommend checking it out. Uh, and then if you decide that you like it and may want to uh, start writing in that format, uh, Jetpack has you covered there. Where you can just enable that module and then uh, paste your Markdown in or, or write directly in Markdown in the editor. Um, so any mathematicians here, this one's usually not a super popular feature, but along those same markdown lines, um, you can display some pretty awesome uh, equations there. I have no idea what that means. Um, but if we have any mathematicians in the room, they might be interested in, in that as well. Uh, so spelling and grammar, uh, obviously WordPress includes some, like obviously spell check and that kind of thing. Um, but Jetpack also includes a spelling and grammar module that will try to notify you of um, like uh, passive voice, that kind of thing, if you, if you haven't checked that. So some more, I guess, advanced grammar features and, and spelling features, uh, making suggestions for maybe better words or better ways to phrase things. Um, and so obviously uh, you know, an automated service is never going to be as good as having a real human read your writing and, and give you feedback. Uh, but this is a, a pretty good way to get some, some feedback and, and an idea of maybe how you could rearrange a sentence to make it sound a little better or something like that. Um, so just a handy little little editing feature. Uh, shortcode embeds um, are really interesting. Uh, so a shortcode, if you're not familiar in WordPress, is basically a, a way you can uh, insert content really easily. Um, so like if you look down at the bottom, we have like a way to insert a Google Maps shortcode. So rather than having to go to Google Maps and get the really long like iframe embed code, you just uh, use the bracket Google Maps. And then right after that, you can just paste a link to the Google Map, uh, and then it will automatically, you know, go out and, and then grab that embed code and embed the Google Map right into your page. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So he asked if there was any downsides to like using shortcodes or Markdown, and and no, not really. Um, that. Basically, in the behind the scenes, those get evaluated to like actual HTML and that kind of thing. So, like when you use that Google Maps shortcode, it's essentially going to go out and create that embed code that you would normally get from Google Maps. It just makes it a little easier on you to not have to go and find that or create that. And the same thing with Markdown; it's just a little bit easier than writing all the, the H1, H2 tags and things like that in HTML. It just makes it quicker and uh, a lot more readable as well for the content that you're writing. Yeah. Yeah, it should, as long as, well, so basically it's just doing an iframe embed, so if the iframe that you get from Google Maps is responsive, which I believe they normally are, um, then that will be responsive as well on the site. Um, and so there's a bunch of other short codes as you can see there, uh, slide share, uh, which are pretty cool for like, you know, when I embed these slides or something like that on my website, that's what I would use. Um, archives, Bandcamp, if you want to insert like a music player or something like that, if you're, you know, a band or a musician that wants to insert. Uh, like a, a little player for your site. Just some, some easy ways and some simple things to, to insert short codes uh, and to make it a little easier on yourself um, to, to insert these things into your site. Um, so next is a really cool feature that I like. Uh, it's called Carousel. Um, and so normally when you have like a gallery embedded on your site and a user clicks on a particular image in the gallery, that would just load that image in a separate page uh, and it would basically take them to what's called the attachment page and so it would just show the image you know, in its own page on the site. But with Carousel, it gives you obviously a lot nicer uh, light box view, so it basically fades out the background and the picture just shows above the, the gallery that they clicked on. Um, and so it's just a nice way to format individual images. You can have, it'll have you know, arrows on either side that can click through the gallery and the, the carousel if they'd like. Um, and if you're into, you know, especially for photographers, it, you can also show the, the EXIF data, the EXIF data of the photo, what kind of camera you took it with, shutter speed, all that kind of stuff. It will also display right there in the carousel if you're interested in that. Um, captions display right below there. 
So it's just a really nice way to display photos in your gallery rather than just having them linked to a, a separate page and uh, not look as nice. So if you have any galleries on your site, basically if you enable Carousel, uh, it's just a one click and then all your galleries will use the carousel um, when, when a user clicks on a, an image to make it larger. So I definitely recommend checking that out. It's one of my favorite, one of my favorite features. And speaking of galleries, um, tiled galleries are another, it's a new, basically a different uh, gallery type that's not normally included in WordPress um, that we build in in Jetpack. So it's kind of a neat way, as you can see, it just kind of tiles uh, your images based on like how large they are, what aspect ratio they're taking in, that kind of thing. Uh, and just presents them in a little bit uh, neater looking way than just like a thumbnail or, or something like that. It kind of tries to place them uh, in, a, in a way that is more visually appealing depending on uh, what the image looks like. Um, captions, so if you, if you hovered over one of the images, uh, if the image had a caption, it would kind of slide up from the bottom and you could uh, view the caption that way. Uh, and it, it's just super easy, so any galleries you have, you can basically just go and change their type to tile galleries. Uh, and, and this will just happen automatically, so there's no, um, no setup or anything like that. Uh, it does all the, the rendering and stuff like that in the background, so you don't, you don't have to pick, you know, this is the large image in the gallery, this is the one over here. Uh, it just places those automatically depending on your, your gallery. On a mobile device itself, it's not going to display like that. Right, yeah, so it'll basically slide them into view a little better. Um, but sure, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be responsive and everything as well on a mobile device, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so the next kind of big bucket of things we want to talk about uh, is growing and engaging your audience, which I think everybody is, you know, concerned with if you're running a website or running a business on WordPress. Um, so we have quite a few features that you can use to uh, especially engage with your audience and find out, uh, you know, what kind of behaviors uh, they're, they're taking on your site, so what they're viewing, that kind of thing. So the first, the first big one, which I've heard a lot of people uh, come by the booth and talk about this weekend, is, is publicize. Uh, so it's basically, you know, in a nutshell, it's an, an easy way to any new blog post you publish to push that out to your various social networks, so Twitter, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, Google+, any of the, the major social networks you're using. Um, and so you basically uh, enable that module, and then you can connect, authorize uh, your site with all those various social networks. So you live, you know, press connect and log into your Facebook account, and then your Facebook account's connected. Um, and so then anyway, anytime you publish a new post, you can choose whether or not you want that post to automatically be published to Facebook or Twitter or whatever for you. Uh, and then when you publish that post in the background, it automatically gets a link uh, and the featured image and that kind of thing sent out to Facebook. Um, so you don't have to worry about going and, and copying the link and then pasting it into Facebook and writing the content yourself. It just automatically happens. Um, you can define a custom message. So if, by default, it's just the post title and then a link to the post. But if you wanted to you know, add a hashtag for Twitter or something like that, or if you wanted to change the message on Facebook, you can definitely do that. Um, and it just all happens in the background. Nothing you have to do to worry about it. Um, and you have you know, the choice each time. If there maybe is a post you don't want to go out, you can always just uncheck the, the publicize options for that particular post and it won't go get published. Yes, ma'am? Does it go out right there? Correct. Yep. So it goes out as soon as the post is published. So if the post is scheduled for a later date, once that post is published, it'll go out. But if you're just clicking the publish button, it'll go out right then. So and sometimes there's maybe, you know, a one or two minute delay depending on how long it takes Facebook to respond. But essentially it's immediate. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the next, uh, sort of along those same lines, sharing links. Um, you can embed those either at the end of your post or really wherever you'd like, um, but they're basically just easy ways to insert some buttons to some popular social networks at the, in your post. So, you know, when a user gets to the end of reading it, if, uh, if they want to share it, this gives them an easy way to do that. Uh, they can just click right on that Twitter button and it automatically populates a tweet for them uh, in their Twitter account uh, with a link back to your post uh, and they can, you know, share that right then. Um, and it, it kind of is just a, a nice way for users to be able to share your content. Uh, you can obviously customize the buttons. So you can see here there's some icons there, the words there, and then the actual you know, official buttons from the social networks there. Uh, you can customize which ones are in view and which ones are hidden behind a more button. So if you only want to have, you know, if Twitter and Facebook are your main social networks, you can only have those two appear and then have the rest behind uh, a little more button over here so that when you click the more button, all the other social networks uh, kind of show up if, if a user wanted to share it to something else. Um, so it's just an easy way to give users a way to, to quickly share your content and hopefully, um, you know, then when the, once they share that, then their, you know, friends and followers and that kind of thing will come back and, and read it as well. Um, so it's a quick way for hopefully your content to get to a, a much wider audience than, than just you sharing it. 
Say that one more time. Yes, you can use custom buttons. Yeah, so if there's not a social network that's included, um, I know we have users in you know, different countries that have different social networks that we haven't integrated yet, but you can add a, a custom button as long as you, you, know, you just basically need an icon and then the, the sharing API link. Uh, you can add a custom button for a, a different social network or a different network. Yeah, so you could add, basically you could add your own custom Pinterest button uh, in that way if you really wanted to do that. Yeah, so you could use the, the social networks that already exist too. So most of the social networks these days don't provide uh, stats directly back to the site, but you can usually, like I know Facebook includes, uh, it's in their developer tools, you can like plug a link into your site and it'll show you how many times it was shared on Facebook. But usually they don't expose that data to like outside sources. Um, you usually have to go directly to them to get those kind of stats. And there are some sites that can that try to aggregate that, but um, it's with some recent like API changes in Facebook and Twitter, especially, it's become pretty difficult to get those stats on our end. Um, so rather than having a bad experience, we we don't try to to gather those. If you use the so if, if we go back, if you use the official buttons. As I mentioned down here, these are the so these are embedding the buttons directly from uh, all those different social networks, and so it's basically directly connected to their API. So you will see a share number there um, if you use those official buttons. Whereas um, you you might not always see a, a share button. We try our best to show a, a number of shares, but sometimes those APIs um, change, and so until we can you know figure out why they locked it down, or you know if we need to authenticate or something like that, we can't always show a share number there. Um, so the next uh, next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, Jetpack comments. Um, so WordPress obviously includes a, a native commenting system where you can basically you, the, you ask the user for a name, uh, an email address, and then their comment or a website maybe in their comment. With Jetpack comments, it basically uh, extends that and allows users to to log in with uh, any of their social networks and use that identity on in your comments. Um, so rather than them having to fill that out, if they log in with Facebook, say, it'll automatically pull in their Facebook avatar or Facebook image uh, and their name and that kind of thing. And so when they comment, uh, that, that information or that data about them will be populated in. So rather than you know, making, users, it, making users fill out that contact or that comment form to, to comment on your site, it just gives them a little easier way to engage. Um, and if they're already logged into one of these services when they view your, your comment form, that will automatically detect that and, and just display that for them automatically and say, Hey, you're you know using you're using your Facebook account or you're using your Twitter account to comment here, uh, and it gives them an option to log out if they don't want to do that. But uh, usually, you know, that's just a simple way, and it it kind of decreases the barrier to entry for somebody to comment on one of your posts if they're already logged in and don't have to fill anything out. They just you know type their comment and then leave it. Um, so, like I mentioned, multiple service authentication, um, and if you're uh, it even even uses uh, WordPress.com, so if they're logged into their WordPress.com account by chance, they can use that account to comment. Uh, so just a super easy way to make it even easier for users to comment on your site uh, than than what it already is. So the the next little feature uh, are likes, which are uh, you could think about it like Facebook likes. Um, it's not really doing a whole lot of anything. It's just a, an easy way to say, hey, I enjoyed reading this, or hey, I, uh, I read this post. Um, and so essentially, it just inserts um, a little like button at the end of your post. And then when somebody likes it, obviously their uh, Gravatar image, if they're logged into .com, will show up there uh, that they liked it. And you can obviously see a number of, of how many people liked your post. Um, so similar to how Facebook does likes, or maybe Twitter does favorites. Um, just a, a neat little way for, for people to engage with your content and say, hey, I enjoyed reading this, and hopefully make you feel pretty good about what you've written or, or what you're uh, asking them to engage with there. Uh, subscriptions are another um, big feature of Jetpack uh, and a really popular one. Um, essentially, you can allow users to subscribe via email um, to your site, and then whenever you publish a new post, it'll automatically get sent out to all your subscribers. Um, so similar to how Publicize works, when you publish a new post, it gets pushed out to your social networks. Uh, subscriptions, anybody who's subscribed to your site via email, um, it'll automatically push those out uh, to email with them. Um, and they can also use, if they uh, prefer WordPress.com, they can also get the, the post pushed to their WordPress.com reader. So if you're subscribed to any sites at WordPress.com, you may be familiar with the reader and how the posts show up in sort of a, uh, a feed type way. Um, but basically, it's, it's just another easy way for you to keep your content in front of people so you can have like a uh, email subscription form in the sidebar of your site and users can just input their email address, click subscribe, and then they're automatically subscribed now. So when next time you publish a new post, it'll automatically get pushed out to them. There's no 
configuration. There's no crazy like email server set up. It just is super easy for you and the user to, to push those out. Uh, there's no uh, load or, or bandwidth uh, requirements on your site because we handle the, the actual email process on our WordPress.com servers. So the, the post basically gets pushed out from our servers instead. So there's no extra load or anything like that on your site. Uh, so nothing to worry about there. Uh, so the, the next little bit, uh, which is on the top of everybody's mind usually, especially with some recent security updates and stuff like that to WordPress, uh, is basically how can we help you increase the security and stability of your site. Uh, so we've got quite a few features that can help with that as well. The, the first one, which a lot of people don't know about, but it can be really interesting, is WordPress.com single sign-on. So if you already, I mean, if you're using Jetpack and have it connected, you already have a, a WordPress.com account. And if you have multiple WordPress sites, it can be you know, a little bit of a, an annoying task to keep track of all the logins for each of those sites. With, if you enable WordPress.com single sign-on on all those, all those sites, you can use your WordPress.com account to log into any site that you manage um, without having to, to keep track of the, the username, separate usernames, separate passwords for all those different sites. Um, and it also, the one other nice feature, if you're familiar with uh, two-factor authentication, uh, a lot of websites now are, are pushing that where you basically have a, a second code that gets sent to your cell phone or something like that to authenticate on the site. Uh, that supports that natively, whereas WordPress, you would have to go out and, and get a separate plugin to do that. Uh, but with WordPress.com single sign-on, it's a lot more, uh, it can be a lot more secure and, and a lot easier to not have to remember uh, you know, seven different usernames and passwords for the seven different uh, WordPress, or WordPress sites that, that you may manage or that you may have. Um, so I would recommend, it basically just adds a, a new button to the, the login form when you try to go to log into your WordPress dashboard that says log in with WordPress.com. And so you click that if you're not already logged into WordPress.com, it asks you to log in. If you are, it just automatically authenticates you and redirects you right back to the dashboard of the site. So just an easy way to, to make managing passwords a little easier, not have to remember so many. Uh, and it is definitely a very secure way to, to log into your sites. So if you haven't tried it, uh, give it a shot and, and see if you like it uh, and, and let me know. Uh, managing your site is another uh, interesting feature that we can help, especially with plugin updates and that kind of thing, uh, making sure that things stay up to date. Uh, so uh, uh, this is a, a new feature of Jetpack uh, called Jetpack Manage. Uh, but basically you can manage all of your Jetpack connected sites from one central location on WordPress.com. <laughs> You can create, con you can write posts from that one location and publish to you know any of your sites that you manage. Um, you can keep your plugins up to date. You can even enable plugin auto updates, similar to how WordPress does auto updates itself. Um, we have it hasn't built out a, a way to do that with plugins. So with the Jetpack Manage feature, if there's a plugin that you know you want to keep up to date, if it's one you trust, um, maybe like a you know a WordPress SEO by Yoast, uh, you know just a large plugin that you can trust the updates from, um, you can basically just click a toggle on WordPress.com and then anytime the, that plugin has an update pushed, it'll automatically uh, update it for you without any interaction from you and it'll send you an email when that's done to let you know, you know, hey, this was successful. I've updated the WordPress SEO plugin or I've updated the Gravity Forms plugin. Yes, ma'am. It'll send you an email as well, letting you know what happened, uh, and then hopefully with some information on how to remedy uh, what the problem is. I personally, I have this enabled on all my sites, uh, and I've been testing this for you know at least a year now, and haven't run into any issues yet on any plugin. Um, it's always been successful for me, but if there is a problem, it'll it'll let you know in that email as well, like hey, I wasn't able to update this plugin or whatever. Um, depending on what the problem was, maybe. Um, it, if it's not able to, it's not able to, but yeah, that would be ideal. You know, in, in a lot of cases, that would be what it would try to do. Um, so you, like I said, you can write blog posts for your sites from this one central location. Um, and it just you know, makes it easy if, you, if you're a freelancer or something like that and you have five, six, you know, 10, 20 WordPress sites that you're managing, um, you can update plugins for all those sites in one location. You don't have to log into each site and do that. Uh, you can even, you know, like I said, write blog posts for all those sites in one location. Um, so uh, it's a really neat feature I would recommend, and it's you know, completely free, which all of these features I'm talking about in Jetpack are. So I would recommend checking it out. Um, it makes it uh, super simple to manage you know, more than one WordPress site. Um, another, sort of along those same lines, uh, Jetpack Monitor will help you monitor the uptime of your site. So if uh, something happens to your host or your, your server goes down or you get a lot of traffic and your site goes down, um, Jetpack Monitor will send you an email to let you know that. Um, so basically it um, checks your site uh, every five minutes. 
um, to see if it's up and if it uh, is either like really slow to respond or if it just doesn't get a response or if it gets a bad response from your site. Um, it checks from two other geographic locations to make sure it's not just an issue with that particular data center. So maybe it checks from you know one of our data centers in Texas that if it sees your site is down, then it checks from you know Asia and uh, Europe or something like that to to make sure that you know it's not just an issue between the Texas data center and your site. Um, and then if it's still down, then that's when it sends the email to let you know. Uh, and then it continu continues to check every two minutes after that uh, until your site's back up. And if the site comes back up, obviously without any interaction from you, it'll send you an email to let you know that. Um, but it, it's just an easy way to, um, to check on your site, make sure, you know, if it's in the middle of the night uh, and you wake up in the morning and your site's been down, you can know that. And then contact your host if you need to to find out what went wrong, if it was something that you need to fix, if it's something that they need to fix. Um, it's just a, an easy notification um, to check on that. And it's, you know, once you enable it, it just uses the email address that's associated with your account on that site. Um, so yeah, I would I have this, you know, enabled on all my sites and I would recommend uh, having it on yours as well because, um, you know, you always want to know if your site's up or down and uh, how to fix that if it does go down. Um, brute force login protection is another new feature of Jetpack. Um, and it basically helps prevent uh, bots or malicious individuals from trying to gain access to your site. So if they uh, are trying to just guess your username and password for your WordPress site, uh, a lot of times they will just try a bunch of different combinations until hopefully they get in. With this brute force login protection, after they have done this you know, a few times and not got in, we just automatically lock down their IP address uh, and just don't allow them to even attempt logging in anymore. So that really uh, protects your site from these kind of attacks. Um, and the, another nice thing about it is it's um, basically network-wide, so any Jetpack-connected site that uh, has an IP locked down, that IP gets locked down for all other Jetpack-connected WordPress sites. Um, so you're kind of, once you enable this, you're kind of uh, helping the greater Jetpack and WordPress community at large because if somebody tries to log into your site and gets locked out because they're just attempting to, to hack it, if they go to another WordPress site that's connected with Jetpack, they won't even get the first chance to log in because that IP address has already been locked out. Um, so it's a nice way to sort of help the community as well as, you know, help your own site and you benefit from that as well from anybody else. Um, so I would definitely recommend enabling this um, and uh, it's, you know, just a, an easy way to, to make, and make sure you're being as secure as you can. Uh, WordPress, since it powers, you know, 24% of the internet now is a, is a target um, for hackers and that kind of thing. So this is an easy way to, to make yourself less of a target and, and not make it, you know, as easy on folks to uh, do some damage to your site. Um, so the last little bit I wanted to talk about was performance of your site, which is another sort of big thing that, that Jetpack can help you with. Um, and the first uh, sort of big thing in that is, is stats. So we all want to know, you know, how many users are visiting our site, how many uh, times they're clicking around, what blog posts they're viewing, that kind of thing. And stats by location in a, like a bar graph format of that in your dashboard. Um, you can view uh, how many users have visited, what posts they're clicking, what posts are most popular, that kind of thing. Um, and so often I recommend uh, running this alongside Google Analytics or something like that. Um, a lot of people are already familiar with Google Analytics. This gives you sort of a, a different view and you can compare and contrast the, the data you're getting from each of those and, and see, get sort of an average or a, um, an, a, an overview of your user's behavior. Um, one of the nice things that WordPress.com stats has that um, uh, Google Analytics does not is we can obviously detect when you're logged into your site and, and clicking around whereas Google Analytics doesn't have a way of knowing if you're logged into your site so it will track all the clicks and all the times you view different posts and pages on your site um, but with Jetpack stats and WordPress.com stats we know that you're logged in so we automatically don't count those in your your overall stats so that way you know if you're clicking around checking things on your site you made a change and you want to you know click through five or ten blog posts just to make sure it looks okay uh, those aren't gonna that's not gonna artificially inflate your stats or anything like that um, so you get a you get a really good representation um, and it's a good way to compare and contrast with other uh, different kinds of stats plugins and stats um, setups that you can use um, and like I said, we like to make sure that your stats are your stats, so you can get them in the mobile apps, you can get them in your WordPress dashboard. If you log in to the, the Jetpack Manage that I mentioned earlier on WordPress.com, those stats are shown there as well. So uh, lots, of, lots of ways for you to, to get those stats. So Photon, I mentioned at the beginning, uh, is a really great service. Um, it's basically a way that 
when you insert an image into a post or page, uh, rather than your server having to, to load that image every time somebody requests that post or page, we serve that from WordPress.com servers, which are um, generally a lot faster and um, you know a lot more responsive than a, than a shared host or something like that that your site might be on. So it just takes some of the load off your server and allows your, uh, your server to focus on other things, you know, rendering the other content and things like that. Um, it's just you know a, a simple way to, to make your site just a little bit faster. It's not going to be a huge difference, but you know every little bit helps uh, when users are having to wait on your site to load. Um, so you know simply enabling enabling it, enabling it can uh, double the concurrent users that your site can support. So if you know your your site crashes with 100 people on uh, your site because it, it just can't handle the load of rendering all that. Uh, if you enable Photon and allow us to serve those images for you, you may be able to serve you know, 150 to 200 users at a single time without things really slowing down. Uh, and the nice thing too is that our data centers, like I mentioned earlier, are all over the world. So if a user in Japan you know, requests a post from your site, the, the images in that post are going to be served from our Asia data centers, which since they're you know, geographically much closer, uh, will be served a lot faster than if they were requesting it from your data center here in the U.S. or something like that. Um, and this is just a one-click thing, so once you enable Photon, all this happens in the background and, and the images are automatically served uh, then from then on until you, know, you disable it or if you decided you wanted to or, or whatever else. Um, and a lot of people want to know like, if they want to try this out uh, and enable it, but they decide for whatever reason they don't want to use it. Um, if you disable it, nothing changes. It just goes back to, your site goes back to serving the images itself, so there's no, like, broken images or anything like that, you don't have to worry about that. Um, so it basically uh, 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 no, uh, no, nothing to worry about if you want to try this out. Um, related posts are another uh, interesting feature that we can kind of help you with engaging your audience. Um, so if you, once you enable this, um, WordPress.com, we basically index all the posts on your site and sort of develop relationships and find out, you know, hey, this po these posts are in similar categories, these posts have similar tags or similar, you know, post content, that kind of thing. Um, and we can then display, uh, by default, it displays three other posts on your site that are what we consider related. Uh, to present users that are reading your posts with. Um, so it's just a great way to uh, hopefully present your, your users with some, some other content that they might be interested in and really engage them a little more on your site, ha not have them just you know, read that one post and then click away. Maybe if they see a related post down at the bottom, they'll click through to that and read that and, and just learn more about what you do, who you are, what your blog's about, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and you know, like a lot of Jetpack's features, all these uh, algorithms and things like that are handled on WordPress.com servers and then just sync back down to your site. So there's no you know, server load uh, of your server trying to index and then make uh, connections between all your different posts, which is nice. Um, so you know, no uh, overhead or anything like that. Uh, and you know, as you can see, you can either choose to display the featured images with the, the post links or if you just want to display the, the titles themselves with links, you can do that too. Um, and with some different uh, short codes and things like that, you can also move the related posts from the bottom to maybe the middle of your post content if you really wanted to or something like that, depending on how your site's laid out. Um, so there's a lot of customization available. You can also uh, have more than three if you'd like. Uh, we can, that's a, uh, a little bit more of an involved process, but if that's something you're interested in, stop by the, the table in a little while and we can talk about that. Um, and you can also, you know, if you wanted to have uh, one particular post show as a related post for every post on your site, you can also do that. Uh, if it's like your favorite blog post or the, the one that's most important on your site, you can have that show in that related post section for, for every other post on your site too. So a lot of customization and, and that kind of thing. Um, and so that kind of wraps up the, the big you know, features and that kind of thing of, of Jetpack. Um, one other, uh, a few more things really that I wanted to mention. Um, Jetpack is well maintained and supported, so I am one of uh, about nine or ten other people that answer your emails and that kind of thing when you have you know, a question or a problem with Jetpack. Um, you have about a one in ten chance of, of me being the person to answer your email, uh, but we have you know, a lot of dedicated people that this, you know, this is our full-time job is helping folks out with Jetpack and um, making sure that they're being as successful as they can be with it. Um, and uh, we also have um, you know, about 15 plus developers who are working on the code every day, day in, day out. Making sure that Jetpack is uh, fast, making sure it uh, works well with all kinds of different server setups and uh, site setups. Um, so it's, it's well supported, well maintained. Uh, we you know, try to release updates as often as we can, so I'm sure you'll see um, some updates coming. If you, you know, install Jetpack today, you'll see updates coming regularly. 
Um, so you can definitely rest assured that it's a, uh, a great maintained plugin. It's also a well-supported plugin, and you know, all for free. It's pretty awesome to get email support um, and you know, a, a maintenance like this forever uh, with a free plugin. Um, so if you're interested, if, you know, if Automatic sounds like an interesting company to you or you want to come work on Jetpack with me, um, we're always looking for, for new awesome people. Um, we have, that number's a little out of date, it's more like uh, almost 400 plus automaticians now working on uh, Jetpack and you know, quite a few other things as well. Um, so that link there at the bottom, automatic.com slash work with us, you can uh, get some more information there and uh, hopefully come maybe work on Jetpack with me or work on some of the other things we do. So if we have, I think, a few minutes, a little while for questions. Um, so does anybody? Yes, sir. Uh, I just have two questions. One, I just wanted to mention on the Google Analytics stuff. Mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of plugins, um, especially all SEO and SEO, the plugin that I work with, mm -hmm. um, provide an opportunity to, to, uh, to uh, block the ad from your traffic. Okay. Like yeah. Uh, out there. And then the second thing is I'm using Postgres. Mm -hmm. So it tries to, Photon, he asked if his images are getting maybe squeezed a little bit on a client site, they're not quite the right size. So Photon tries its best to you know, be responsive and display those images um, uh, in a, at a size that is appropriate for the browser that it's being viewed on. Um, every once in a while we'll, ha we'll see issues with that. So you know, if you're having that problem, send us an email and we'll take a look. Um, but it's probably an issue, it, may, it may be an issue with um, the content width, set, content width setting on the, the theme or something like that. Or, um, but usually, 99% uh, of the time, it, it works. But occasionally, there is an issue where it may, you know, throw in a, the wrong size for a particular browser or something like that. So we're happy to help you out with that um, and, and see what's going on at least. Uh, figure out what's going on with that. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. So uh, Automatic already has a, a backup service vault press, right? So that is basically what we're pushing with our, our manage feature is um, having users connect vault press and use that for their backups as well. Uh, so it, yeah, yeah, vault press is, is pretty well integrated into Jetpack. So if you're interested in site backups, uh, if you're not backing up your site regularly, um, I would highly suggest doing that because if you know if something happens, an update, plugin update or something brings down your site, it's just an easy way to roll back uh, and make sure that uh, your site is not affected for as long as possible. Um, and so I'll plug Vault Press. It's another product that we build that's well integrated into Jetpack, and it can do daily, it can do hourly, and it can do real time backups of your site. Uh, so you can always roll back to a previous version of your site if if something goes wrong. Super easy to set up uh, and that kind of thing. So. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can you talk a little bit about plugin management and mm -hmm. do you have conflicts with what's in that conflict and can you have many and does it slow down your site? So generally, uh, she asked if there were uh, such a thing as like plugin conflicts and then if you have too many plugins, can it slow down your site? Um, and so, I mean, yeah, you know, as with anything, the more, uh, the more you add to something, the, the slower it can get. So if you have a, you know, say an iPhone or something like that, and you have, you know, your storage completely full with apps or something like that, your phone's probably going to be a little slower. Um, so that is something that you can, you might need to watch out for. Um, but generally, uh, plugins are, uh, hopefully, if you're using reputable plugins and things like that, like Jetpack and some other large plugins, uh, hopefully they're coded well enough that they, obviously, one, don't have conflicts, and two, are not using more resources than what they need on your site, so not slowing your site down uh, to do what they need to do. Um, and so a lot of the way we do that with Jetpack is offloading a lot of that processing to WordPress.com servers so that we're not uh, you know, overtaxing or uh, using more of your server than we need to. Uh, and a lot of other plugins do similar things. Um, so in general, uh, that's not something to worry about. But if, if you are noticing your site is uh, loading really slowly or seeing issues, then that's definitely somewhere to start is to evaluate what plugins you're using, what plugins that are installed that you may not be using that you could deactivate. Um, and just check that out and, you know, it's, it's always good to, to 
keep an eye on the health of your site and that kind of thing. And so that's one way to do that is removing plugins you're not using anymore and, and uh, making sure that the ones you, you do have installed are ones that you're actively using. Um, but if, if they're all things you're using, uh, then I would, you know, you know, look into other things if your site's slow or something like that, maybe a uh, better server or something like that um, and, and that kind of thing. So that's, that would be my answer. Anybody else? Yeah, of course. Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep, yeah. So he asked for the for everybody else, he asked if it was compatible with, you know, all themes, you know, regardless. And, uh, and so the answer is yes. If you do have any issues, we're happy to help you out with that. But, um, you know, we, we try to test it on as wide a variety of themes as we can uh, and don't run into any issues. So if for some reason, Maybe you would run into an issue. We're happy to help with that, but we don't uh, we don't see that very often, if at all. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So he asked some hosting companies offer CDNs, which is you know I mentioned Photon as an image CDN, and so the the difference there is that with Photon we're just doing images, whereas with hosting companies that are offering CDNs, they're going to be serving. Uh, basically, your entire site uh, from you know geographically uh, lo geographic locations that are close to where your users are requesting it. They're going to be compressing your your JavaScript, CSS, PHP files, and that kind of thing. Um, so I would recommend if if you do have that uh, opportunity and that's something you're interested in, I would you know run them in parallel. It's not gonna not gonna affect anything if you're running a CDN from your host as well as Photon for your images. Um, that's only gonna you know, in general, make your site faster. So um, I would I would use them in parallel. It's not you know one or the other or something like that. They can some some do some don't. So um, yeah, it, it depends. Uh, some hosts do include serving images. Some don't. Um, so if uh, if that's something your host is doing, uh, I would definitely recommend checking it out and, and seeing you know what they offer. Anybody else with with questions? Yeah. So he asked if Jetpack had had any like notable security issues or hacking issues, uh, and no, we haven't. Uh, so we obviously, you know, have maintained security releases and things like that. We haven't had a, an issue that uh, the Jetpack plugin was vulnerable and that vulnerability was exploited. Obviously, all plugins uh, and even WordPress itself uh, occasionally have vulnerabilities, and as long as those are, you know, disclosed in the proper ways and that kind of thing, we fix those, and uh, usually it's never an issue. So we haven't had an issue where. Uh, uh, security vulnerability was exploited in Jetpack uh, that I'm aware of, and I've been working on this for a couple years now. So we we try our best to keep it as secure as we can. Anybody else? Yeah. Maybe it's none of my business, but is Jetpack free and Photon free? Mm -hmm. None of this. How do you guys stay alive? <laughs> so I've gotten this question about five times this weekend, uh, and that's a, a really good question actually. He asked if you know if Jetpack's free, everything's free. How do we? function as a company. Uh, and so Automatic has quite a few other products. As I mentioned, VaultPress for backups, that's a paid service. Um, we also host, uh, with WordPress.com VIP, we host sites like Time Magazine uh, and some other New York Times, some really large websites. And so they pay us quite a bit of money for basically 100% uptime uh, support from our developers and things like that. Um, so we make, we make money in other ways uh, and, and make a lot of it. Um, so uh, yeah, no worries with Jetpack going anywhere. It's just sort of a, a way to give back to the WordPress community at large um, for us. So you know, we could charge for these services, but we don't because we feel like it's a, a good way for us to give back to, to WordPress as a whole and to our users and that kind of thing. It's, it's mostly a matter of, OK, there's an awful lot of apps out there that haven't been maintained, mm -hmm. haven't been upgraded. Mm -hmm. The last time somebody touched them was 2012. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we have plans to continue developing Jetpack uh, well into the future. So, no worries with that. We, you know, just released a, an update a week or two ago. So, and we'll probably have another one coming out in another week or two. So, uh, you can you can rest assured that uh, that's Jetpack is is on the long term plans for for automatic as a product. So, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, sure. 
So each, uh, if you're familiar with the, the WordPress.org plugin repository where you go to usually install or download free plugins and things like that, each plugin has its own forum um, that you can use to either search if you want to try to find your answer uh, or that kind of thing. So yeah, I would, you know, you could start there uh, and even make a new post if you wanted. And, and you know, so we, so along with working in email support, I also work in those forums as well, answering questions. Uh, and we also have a support site, jetpack.me slash support. We have support docs and stuff like that there, so you may be able to find an answer there as well. But if you don't, you know, feel free to send us an email because that's what we're there for and we're happy to help you out. Anybody else? No? All right. Well, I thank you guys for coming. I think we are just about right on time here, so I uh, appreciate you guys coming and listening. And if you have any questions, stop by the, the Jetpack table out there. <laughs>